Friends, welcome to worship here at North Kelowna United Church. We meet on the 21st of February, and this is the first Sunday in Lent. Our worship assistant this day is Donna, our reader is Nancy. Music is by Reverend Tannis, and I'm the minister, Don Johnson. We acknowledge with sadness the passing of Kay Church, and we offer to her family our sincere condolences in the loss of their mother and grandmother. May she rest in peace and rise in glory. We acknowledge that we meet and work in Treaty 1 land, the traditional lands of the Anishinaabe, Cree and Dakota peoples, and the homeland of the Métis Nation. We are thankful for these first inhabitants, and we commit to working together towards justice, truth, and reconciliation. In Christian teaching and tradition, each Sunday is believed to be a little Easter, a weekly celebration of the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we light this candle, affirming that Christ is indeed the light of the world, our hope and our salvation. There is no other in whom we place our trust. Let us worship God. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See if there is any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way of everlasting. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship God as we hear the prelude. confession together in the prayer listed. Let us pray. God of mercy, you sent Jesus Christ to seek and save the lost. We confess that we have strayed from you and turned aside from your way. We are misled by pride, for we see ourselves pure when we are stained, 
and great when we are small. We have failed in love, neglected justice, and ignored the truth. Have mercy, O God, and forgive our sin. Return us to the paths of righteousness through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Hear now the word of God. The scripture reading, first scripture reading today is from Hebrew scripture, Genesis chapter 9, verses 8 to 17. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I'm establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you, and every living creature that is with you, for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and see the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. And God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. And the second reading is a psalm reading, Psalm 25, verses 1 to 10. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Do not let me put to shame. Do not let my enemies exult over me. Do not let those who wait for you be put to shame. Let them be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from old. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me. For your goodness sake, O Lord. For good and upright is the Lord. Therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his decrees. This is the word of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The Gospel is written in the ninth chapter, or the first chapter, rather, of the Gospel according to Mark, verses 9 to 15. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. Then a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of Christ. Thanks Thank be you. to God. Let us pray. Great friend, if there is anything in our ways in need of change, find some way to let us know. Amen. That prayer came from a book entitled Lenten Prayers for Busy People by William J. O'Malley. 
an Irish, uh, an American Jesuit priest, theater director, actor, and teacher. He has published over 30 books and 100 articles on spirituality and Christian living. Last year, our study group used his excellent book on parables. His one secular claim to fame is that he played the role of Father Dyer in The Exorcist, a movie that I am in no hurry to see again. His work is honest and refreshing and draws on a deep and profound belief in the nearness of God in our daily living. So here he is rephrasing of the gospel passage we just heard. Because Mark's account is, is so bare bones, Father O'Malley has included Matthew's text as well in order to, to flesh it out a bit. When Jesus stumbled up the banks of Jordan, where John had baptized him, the terrifying voice still thundering in his soul, you are my son, you are the one. The Spirit hurled him into the wilderness for 40 days and nights to have his vocation tested. Ha! Ha! If you are the Son of God, turn these stones into bread, and they'll flock to you like sheep. No one can resist bread. Fling yourself from the mountaintop. They can't resist a miracle. That's all they want from you. Take on the power of Caesar and coerce them to goodness. And when evil left him, rejected, angels ministered to him. When John was arrested, Jesus came forth up north in Galilee, proclaiming the new covenant. The time of fulfillment is now. The new kingdom of God is at your fingertips. Change your lives your whole way of looking at what's important. I've brought good news. Change your lives. Your whole way of looking at what's important. I've brought good news. This is how Father O'Malley reworded the New Revised Standard Version of Mark's text. The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Repentance is a strong theme during the season of Lent, and as we see in Mark, repentance is essential to embracing the good news of the Gospel. But I think we may mistake repentance with just feeling bad about ourselves, and we never really move beyond that. And in doing so, we deny our very humanity as we are putting ourselves down. When I was in elementary school, the teacher had a series of quotes on sheets of paper lined above the blackboard. The one that has always stayed with me is a Chinese proverb. The glory is not in never falling, but in rising every time you fall. New beginnings, rising every time you fall. I've often thought of that. We are so tempted to present ourselves to others as, as flawless, perfect, never a hair out of place, never a misspoken word. But perfect people don't need Jesus, don't need forgiveness, don't need to forgive others. Perfect people don't fall, don't show weakness, don't need help. Perfect people don't make mistakes, and when mistakes are made, they are someone else's fault. Perfect people are never wrong, at least in their minds. But presenting ourselves as perfect costs so much. It takes so much energy to maintain an unreal facade of perfection. And then every so often we are reminded of how imperfect, how human, we really are. The other extreme, the opposite of the perfect and arrogant person, is to be, is to be tempted to embrace a, a false sense of humanity, of humility. You know what I mean? That woe is me, I am not worthy form of humility. That sense of never quite measuring up, 
never quite being good enough or smart enough or whatever deficiency we imagine ourselves to be hindered by. Those self-imposed limitations we place on ourselves that are based more on fear than fact. William Temple, Archbishop of Canterbury in the early 1940s, addressed that form of humility this way. And I think it's a rather brilliant insight. He said, humility does not mean thinking less of yourself than of other people, nor does it mean having a low opinion of your own gifts. It means freedom from thinking about yourself one way or the other at all. The humility which consists in being a great deal occupied about yourself and saying you are of little worth is not Christian humility. It is one form of self-occupation and a very poor and futile one at that. Our present life of coping with COVID has placed all of us in our own pressure cookers of stress and frustration and fear. Those living alone have felt that aloneness quite intensely and, and quite painfully at times. As well, those living with others have known at times great frustration in cohabiting 24 hours a day with someone who, pre-pandemic, was often away at work or, or other commitments. Too much of a good thing is not always good. Recently, I saw this in the church bulletin. Because of the immense pressure this, because of the immense pressure this year has had placed on individuals in all manner of circumstances, COVID is identified in some circles as a magnifier. That is, our defenses are down and increasingly over time, we may not have always been our best selves. Or, perhaps, in this time of our isolation has allowed us the time to uncover long-standing issues regarding forgiveness or other patterns of behavior that, with God's help, we wish to address, confess, and resolve. Does that speak to you? It certainly does to me. I know that I have often not been my best self, not been as loving and forgiving as I know I am capable of doing and being. Change your eyes, your whole way of looking at what's important. I've brought good news, Jesus said. Turn away from judgment of others and loathing of ourselves. Abandon the false illusion of perfection and be the flawed, imperfect yet loved person God created you to be, the person Christ died to save. See what's truly important and forgive and begin again. Realize that you don't need to be perfect or faultless for God to love you. Embrace that good news. Father O'Malley has a poem that speaks of God's love and compassion for all of us. A fervent prayer rose up to heaven. A fragile soul was losing ground. Sorting through this earthly battle, heaven heard the sound. It was a life of no distinction, no successes, only tries. Yet gazing down on this unlovely one, there was love in heaven's eyes. In heaven's eyes, there are no losers. In heaven's eyes, no hopeless cause. Only people like you, with feelings like me, and we're amazed at the grace we find in heaven's eyes. The orphan child, the wayward father, the homeless traveler in the rain, when, lo when life goes by and no one bothers, Heaven feels the pain. Looking down, God sees each heartache, knows each sorrow, hears each cry. And looking up, we'll see compassion's fire ablaze in heaven's eyes. 
Currently, we're living in a time when it seems that forgiveness is in short supply. There is no room for repentance for those for whom the social media has denounced as modern day sinners. There is no hope of restoration in the court of public opinion, no chance of reconciliation between the accused and the accuser. An allegation, untested or unfounded, an accident or action not intended, turns into a modern day witch hunt and careers are destroyed and lives damaged. And yet, those who make the allegations are treated and present themselves as totally blameless and perfect, and are often cloaked in the protection of anonymity. And if the allegation proves to be groundless, the, dame, the damage is still done, and yet another person suffers. More than ever, we need a spirit of forgiveness and new beginnings within our society and our world. We may not be able to change the world, but we can begin with ourselves, our openness to God's grace and love, our willingness to see what's truly important in life. Lent is a time to draw closer to God, to pray for forgiveness and to embrace the great truth that God forgives us even before we seek forgiveness. It is to see ourselves as cherished children of God, born in the likeness of God, redeemed by the cross of Christ, guided and nurtured by the Holy Spirit. Or to put it in the immortal words of a bit of graffiti, God made me and he doesn't make junk. Charles Wesley would have us confidently sing, finish then thy new creation pure and spotless let us be. Let us see thy great salvation perfectly restored in thee, changed from glory into glory, till in heaven we take our place, till we cast our crowns before thee, lost in wonder, love, and praise. They were saying on the radio that secondhand stores were having problems with inventory because so many people had used the lockdowns since last March to clear away the clutter in their homes, and now they have little to give away. This season of Lent is a time for each of us to clear away from within us all that blocks our love of God and our love of our neighbor. It is a time of self-examination, a time to repent of our past misdeeds and mistakes, to seek forgiveness and to forgive those who have sinned against us, to let it all go and start afresh. How did Father O'Malley put it? Change your lives, your whole way of looking at what's important. In his Lenten book, Father O'Malley offers this prayer for use each day. In it are a few petitions where the, the reader can add their own input. As you will hear, he really does take seriously the understanding of God as our friend, our companion, our guide. Perhaps this prayer could be your prayer throughout the Lenten days. God, my friend, I offer you each moment of this day. Whatever comes, the unexpected challenges, diversions from my plans, the need-filled glance, the expectations and complaints, the being taken for granted, the slights and slights of hand. I'd be grateful if you could keep me aware of my pesky habits like and we fill in our own. And between us, perhaps we can enliven the spirits of those I live and work with, like, once again, list who you were thinking of. Whatever else befalls, I trust we can cope with it together. Amen. We turn now to an affirmation of faith in the words of a new creed. We are not alone. We live in God's world. 
we believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Generous God, we give thanks for the richness of life, for the beauty and wonder of the world, for the care of those who love us, for strength and hope in the trials and difficulties of life, for the gospel of the risen Lord, and for his presence with us through the Holy Spirit. Loving God, we pray for all who are ill, ease their pain, calm their restlessness, give them such trust in you that they may know they are always in your keeping. Bless all who care for them, give them such trust in you that they may win new strength, and may their love and tireless patience bring your grace and comfort to those who suffer. This day we especially call to mind and pray for Peter O, Abe H, Mary M, Joan and Aaron, and for those whom we now name in the silence of our hearts. Shepherd of our souls, be with us in the dark valley and give your gentle companionship to all who are about to die. Be with us at our partings, and comfort with your presence all who grieve in loneliness or tears. Remember your church on earth. Enable Christian people to walk with Christ in their daily lives and to work for the coming of his kingdom. Strengthen the witness of the church here and in every place, that the world may live to may learn to live your truth and seek your peace. This day especially, we ask you to further the mission of the church, to bless the outreach of one just city, and this day we call to mind the work of West Broadway Community Ministry. Remember the nations of the world. Bring to an end all war and strife. Break down the barriers of race and creed that all may live as members of one family of God. O oh God, we remember with thanksgiving those who have died in faith, especially those known and dear to us. This day we hold before you, K Church. Rest eternal grant unto her, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon her. May she rest in peace and rise in glory. We pray that her family will have strength and comfort in the days ahead. Grant us a living hope, O God, and bring us, when our days on earth are over, to share the joys of everlasting life through Jesus Christ. We commend ourselves to your keeping. Grant that our hearts may find their peace and rest in you through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be glory forever and ever, as together we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And we conclude our worship with this prayer by Angela Ashton. Let us pray together. Lord, in these days of mercy, make us quiet and prayerful. In these days of challenge, make us stronger in you. In these days of emptiness, take possession of us. In these days of waiting, open our hearts to the mystery of your cross. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace this day and always. Amen.